X. I feel honored today to lead the debate on a bill for an act to establish a unified scheme for a sound financial system that will facilitate and improve credit repayment culture by empowering creditor banks to track loan defaulters account in any bank in Nigeria through the means of bank verification number. Recover past and due obligations without recourse to borrower, provide penalties for breaches and violations of obligations and enhance loan recovery across banking sectors in Nigeria and for other related matters. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, in Nigeria, commercial and development banking system evolved to support the trading activities and economic development growth along the Nigerian coast in the late century. In fact, commercial banks are organized on a joint stock company system, primarily for the purpose of earning a profit. There was always a multiplier and downstream effects which crystallized in an explosion of funding requirement in all economic endeavors. Therefore, without doubt, the injection of fresh credit and increase in efficiency in the service delivery from every financial subsector are imperative for full realization of economic growth. My distinguished colleagues, the core of the financial system of any country are the commercial banks because they have the potential to apply the full weight of their credit facilities for the development and growth of the country's economy. Credit is seen as the bloodstream of the banking business. It is the vital material that oils the wheel of development. The situation of Nigeria today demands an injection of a healthy bank credit and recovery system that will effectively fasten the pace of growth. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, creditor banks, creditors' banks' lending objective is to make loans that can be prepared while minimizing high exposure to loans with poor credit quality. However, every lending institution finds itself from time to time with loan for which the risk of lose is greater than anticipated. When the loan was made or in which the risk is greater than a lender, will ordinarily willingly assume. This is because in the lending environment, there are basically two types of borrowers, the good and the bad. It is the category of borrowers that carries a risk of default on loan repayment. Mr. President, lest we forget, before the deregulation of our banking system, the ability of our banks to recover loans has been the bedrock behind the collapse of many commercial banks with a dear consequences to many innocent account holders, which have resulted in collapse of their businesses, lose of savings, and even debt. In many instances, most economies have consequently experienced high and increasing rates of unemployment as a result of such negligences of the credit system. These problems have been the main target of policy measures all these years, though at the time it becomes main focus of policy on which was retarded as more pressing and serious each time. Today, the situation in Nigeria has become very serious and seemingly intractable, and thereby frustrate our effort as a nation towards private-driven economy, as well as economic diversification and growth. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, in the light of the above, there is only one obvious option left for any country where policy measures failed, which is to urgently enact a legislation that will address the problems once and for all. We may all recall here that there was a court judgment that gives the banks the right to take back their money from defaulters from any of the banks where they have those deposits. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the objectives of this bill are to establish a unified scheme for a sound financial system that will facilitate and improve credit repayment culture, empowers the creditor's bank to track loan defaulters account in any bank in Nigeria through the means of bank verification number, thereby enhancing loan recovery across banking sectors, and provide penalties for breaches and violations of obligations. The overriding principle behind the introduction of this bill is to facilitate and improve credit repayment culture, reduce non-performing loans in our banking sector, streamline loan recovery as well as watch list consistent loan defaulters with the view to track and blacklist them. The bill has 14 clauses. Clause 1, 2, and 3 provide for objects of the bill, qualification to participate in the scheme, and issuance of global standing instruction mandates. 
Clause 4 and 5 provide for responsibilities of creditors' bank and eligible accounts. Clause 6 and 7 provide for responsibilities of borrower and participating financial institutions. Clause 8 and 9 provide for responsibilities of Nigeria Interbank Settlement System and the Central Bank. Clause 10 provides for the role of Chief Bricks Officer and other officers. Clause 11 provides for violations and penalties. Clause 12 provides for right of customer. Clause 13 and 14 provide for interpretation and citation. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, in view of the foregoing explanations, I urge you all to support the speedy passage of this bill. This bill has no financial implication when passed. Thank you most sincerely for your kind attention. Area that I want us to dwell on very importantly is the issue of unlimited personal guarantees of borrowers. Unlimited to the extent that whatever that uh, whatever the borrower has by way of tangible or intangible assets should be brought to book when it comes to loan recovery. Those there are specialized forms for such purposes. I think we need to educate most of these banks to come up with sophisticated forms, forms that will ensure that whatever that uh, a borrower has, tangible or intangible, here in Nigeria or outside Nigeria, within his family, outside his family, anywhere, we should be able to pursue it and recover our money. Well, what some of them do is that they borrow money and they go and invest it somewhere else. So if you have a form designed to take care of tangible and intangible assets, unlimited, wherever, that will go a long way in recovering some of these loans. That is my submission, and on that note, I want to support the second reading of this bill. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Is there any... President, while the economies have credit system, it's also important that there are structures put in place to safeguard against borrowers uh, that are defaulting. In a system like ours, that is gradually going towards a credit-based economy. It's important, and I believe that's what my friend here is trying to do, to put in structures in place to safeguard the economy against defaulters. We have a situation now where just 10 people can run down the whole financial sector of this country because of the amount of debts in which they owe. We cannot afford to have that kind of risk for this country. A situation whereby people move from banks to banks without any recourse uh, to their previous debts, and they can still amass a lot of debt and still walk around score free is something that we have to totally work, uh, safeguard against. I think this is a very timely uh, bill. I think it's a very apt bill. I say bill that just will necessarily will safeguard our economy and enable our economy for, for creditors to have confidence that there are systems in place and laws in place that will we, that we safeguard them against any default, uh, some of these defaulters. So it's a bill that I strongly support and I urge my other colleagues to support it for the second reading. Thank you, Mr. President. Sponsored by my very good friend, Senator Musa Sani. But in supporting it, I also want to stress that there are some issues that have to be taken into consideration in as much as that this bill is very important. And I hope that during the public hearing, that will be put into serious uh, consideration. There are some borrowers who, for force, not their, theirs, had run into problem. For example, some of the farmers I know who are into poultry business had some unforeseen calamities occasioned by bed flu disease and wiped out all their beds. Even though they, have, they also had to, to insure their farm, the Nigerian Insurance Company also declined because according to them, their insurance did not cover bed flu. A situation where such arises, and the banks are only insisting on collecting their their money, not minding what has befallen the, the, the farmer. The situation where I think in supporting this bill, we have to make sure that 
such cases, such isolated cases, there are certain uh, uh, issues that have to be put in the bill to ensure that people who suffer these unforeseen circumstances caused by disease or flood for those who are in, the, in, the, in the rice famine or other calamities, unforeseen calamities, are specially treated so that they, they don't, we don't apply a general rule for everybody. There are those who are actually criminals, who collect money, jump from one bank to the other. Some people, the, 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 the law should have no mercy for them. But for those who genuinely, genuinely have issues, natural issues, that are not caused by, self, by themselves, I think we should also make sure that such cases, such people are given some consideration. Because the commercial banks don't care. They give you loan to a business, and whether you are, you, you, the, the business failed or not, they are not interested in even finding out how, why is the business failed, failing. All they want is they want, they want their money back. And I think this issue, that culture should be discouraged among our commercial banks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator Musa Sani, for this, uh, uh, this bill. Clearly, uh, there are challenges in the banking sector that we need to, uh, to address. Uh, and this bill, for the most part, seeks to do just that. But I think in the course of uh, this debate, uh, listening to one of the contributors, asking for unlimited uh, uh, guarantee, I don't know uh, if that is the direction we should be looking at, because uh, I'm sure this issue will be addressed during uh, uh, the public hearing and also during the clause-by-clause -clause, uh, uh, debate. Otherwise, uh, on the whole, it's a great bill. It is one I believe that ought to proceed to second reading. Having said that, let me go ahead and uh, put it to a vote. Those in favor that this bill be now read the second time say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The ayes have it. Clerk, please proceed to read it for a second time. A bill for an act to establish a unified scheme for a sound financial system that will facilitate and improve credit repayment culture by empowering creditors' banks to track loan defaulters' account in any bank in Nigeria through the means of bank verification number, recover past and due obligation without recourse to borrowers, provide penalties for breaches, and violations of obligations and enhance loan recovery across banking sectors in Nigeria and for other related matters, 2020. Second reading taken. Leader of the Senate.